angles of elevation and angles of depression and bearings. An angle of elevation is easy to work out if we first look straight and then we look up we get an angle between us looking straight and us looking up that's called the angle of elevation and the angle of depression is similar if we first look straight and then look down this is usually when we're high up then that angle that those two lines make is called the angle of depression angle of elevation and angle of depression are equal to each other example 11 says a pile of a helicopter flying at 400 meters so I'm going to quickly draw this up 400 meters there there's the helicopter up here observes a small boat at an angle of depression so this is a pilot looking straight that's the angle of depression in there being 1.2 degrees it doesn't have to be an accurate drawing as long as your measurements are right calculate the horizontal distance of the boat to the helicopter so if there's the boat there that's the horizontal distance right there that we need now that's the angle of depression this angle is the angle of elevation because that's the line of sight there and then looking up so that's the same so we've got tan 1.2 degrees equals 400 divided by d so d will equal 400 divided by tan 1.2 degrees so d equals 19095.5 Eight zero. So in other words, I'm just going to round it that the distance is 19,096 metres. Example 12. Again, I'm going to draw a picture. It says the light on top on a cliff top tower. So there's cliff top lighthouse known to be 75 metres above the sea level is observed from a small boat at an angle of elevation. Of 7.1 degrees. Calculate the distance of the boat from the lighthouse. So again, that distance there. Again, we have tan 7.1 degrees equals 75 divided by d. D will equal 75 divided by tan 7.1 degrees. So this distance here is 602.135. So therefore, the distance is 602 meters. I'm not writing any of these. In words I'm sure you guys can. Example 13. From a point A, a man observes that the angle of elevation of the summit of a hill is 10 degrees. So there's that, there's my hill, and that angle in there is 10 degrees. He then walks the hill to walks towards the hill for 500 meters. So in other words, 500 meters later, he's now here. Along flat ground, the sum of that of the hill is now at an angle of elevation of 14 degrees. So 14 degrees is there. Find the height of the hill above the level of A. Okay, so we've got a right angle here. There's plenty of ways to do this. All right, quickest way, that's 180 degrees. If that's 14 in there, then in here, this angle right here is 166 degrees and if that's 166 and we've got 10 degrees there then we can quickly work this one out being 4 degrees and therefore I can find this distance and then use that to find my height so let's work out that distance so I'm going to use the sine rule D divided by sine of its angle which is 10 degrees equals 500 divided by sine of its angle which is 4 degrees so the distance will equal 500 divided by sine 4 degrees times sine 10 degrees and when you work this one out on your calculator you get 1244.67 and so on don't round off this answer because the final answer is the height so now we know this this is 14 degrees in there. We've just worked out that answer, 1244.67, still in your calculator, so leave it. You want to work out the H, so we can use sine theta. Sine 14 degrees is the opposite. H divided by 1244.67, etc. So H will equal 1244.67, whatever else it is, times sine 14 degrees. And our final answer will be 3. 
301.11, so in other words, 301, and that is meters. So that's where you round off. Bearings. Okay, there's two types of bearings that we need to go. Compass bearings, I'll do first. So this is compass bearings. Compass bearings start at the north or the south, and we read it. So if this one is north, 20 degrees towards the east. If that's the east there, or this part here, if that's 20 degrees that way, is north 20 degrees towards the west. And if we start from down here, this one is south 20 degrees towards the east, so we start at the south, and if it's that way 20 degrees, this one's south 20 degrees towards the west. True bearings always start at the north, and we read from the north like this. So if this was 20 degrees in there, true bearings are 0, 20 degrees true. So we've got to use all three. And if this is 20 degrees in there, then we go all the way to here. So that's 160, so it's 160 degrees true, always from the north. Example 14. A road from town A runs due west for 14 kilometres to town B. So there's A, there we go, town B, due west for 14 kilometres. The television mast is located due south of B at a distance of 23 kilometres. 23 kilometres, and that's the mast. And of course, that's a right angle. Calculate the distance and bearing of the mast from the centre of town. So I'm going to calculate this distance here. So I'll quickly use Pythagoras' theorem. D squared equals 14 squared plus 23 squared. Take the square root. So well, this one here, the distance is 26.925. So let's say the distance is 27 kilometers. They also want to know the bearing from town A. So the bearing is this whole angle until we get to here. Okay, so we know that this part is 180 degrees. So if we find this, we add it to 180 and we've got our bearing. And that angle is the same as that angle there. That's equal. So working that out, we've got tan of theta equals 14 divided by 23. And therefore, I've got to get out my calculator and do this because I um, haven't done it yet. 14 inverse 10 14 divided by 23 is helps if I change it out of gradients, but when I work that out, my theta is. I'll add the 180 to it, and I get 211.33 degrees. So, what's that answer? Example 15. A yacht starts from point A and sails on a bearing of 38 degrees for 3,000 meters. So I'll start it down here. There's point A. There's my little cross, 38 degrees is in there for 3,000 meters. It then alters its course to a bearing of 318 degrees, or 360 minus 318 leaves us with 42 degrees. And it goes for 3,300 meters and it reaches point B. Find the distance AB. So we've got to find the distance from A to B, which is that one there. Okay, well that's fine. I know that this is 180 degrees. And I know this in here is 38 degrees. So 180 minus 42 minus 38 gives us what's left in there, which is 100 degrees. So I've got that already. That's pretty easy. Sometimes you need it, sometimes you don't. If I want to know that distance, and because I do want to know this distance, I can use the sine rule because I've got its angle. 
and I've got a distance and its angle. So I'm going to go D divided by sine of its angle, which is 100 degrees, equals 3,300 divided by sine of its angle, which is 38 degrees. So D equals 3,300 divided by sine 38 degrees times sine 100 degrees. And when I work this one out, I get 4830 meters. That's rounded off. The bearing of B from A. Well, the bearing of B from A. So very quickly, I'll draw that again. We had that, then we had that, then we had this. This was A here, this was B. I had a hundred here that we worked out. This was three thousand there. This was three three zero zero, and we want the bearing of B from A. So we want this all the way around to there. Okay. So the probably the best thing would be is to work out angle A itself. Okay. So if I do that, I get thirty three hundred divided by sine of angle A equals AB, I just worked out AB, it was 4830 divided by sine of its angle which was 100 degrees. I should have flipped it anyway, when you work this out you get A degrees equals 42.288. Now bearing from B to A now we've got that part in there, we have to subtract it because we want to know all the way around. So A, I should write bearing, B from A will equal 360 degrees minus the 42.29, okay, plus the 38 degrees because we've already got that in there. So that will equal 355.71 degrees, in other words, roughly 360 degrees.